I'm Jeffrey E. Berger, and welcome to Holistic Mental Fitness Series, where myself and Mupo Entertainment believes mental fitness is the new physical health. So before I bring on my very special guest, Allison Grace um, Maggie, uh, I would like to say a couple of things. As a certified holistic wellness coach, I'm really humbled to be affiliated with an amazing group of humanitarian entrepreneurs who are out there making a difference in this world and aligned with the only holistic mental wellness company that is actually focusing on the microbiome. And many people ask, what is that? Well, actually, it's your gut, brain, heart, access health. And this is a science that's disrupting the health and wellness industry today, especially when it comes to mental health. Who out there hasn't experienced stress, anxiety, depression, or even has had suicidal thoughts? I'm sure many of you can relate to that. So this interview series is very near and dear to my own heart because it's about sharing stories, other people's stories, opening up conversations from all areas of wellness to help people really understand it's okay to talk about mental, physical, and emotional health. Share experiences, bringing awareness, and become informed of alternative solutions that are out there and that are safe and actually work. So we provide real solutions to real people who are serious about getting their physical, mental, and emotional health from a state of barely surviving or just surviving to thriving again. You know, there is no physical health without mental wellness. And they are really, we've discovered they're two sides of the same coin, and they are vital for each other and our ability to reach our peak potential in this one life that we get to live. So how we feel is not just in our head, it's also in our guts. So with that, this is what we do best. So before I bring on Allison Grace, I wanted to just bring up really quick here that uh, this interview series is in collaboration with Mupo Entertainment at MupoTV.com. You can also download our Android or iPhone app, Mupo Entertainment. We're also seen on Fire TV, Vimeo, and Roku. And we'll be right back with Allison on the stage. Stay tuned. So welcome back, and we are here with Alice, who is joining us from Bartlett, Illinois, where she lives with her mom and her brother. Allison is the youngest. She is the youngest interviewee on this series so far, which I'm really, really excited for her to be here today and share a little bit about her story. Uh, she is an, a, a dancer, and hey, that's that was my background back when I was your age, many, many, many moons ago. And she's very, very passionate about mental and physical wellness, um, being an advocate with this, and believes a healthy, happy living is the best living today. She's also a budding teen solopreneur and very excited about her venture to share holistic wellness with the world. Welcome, Allison Grace. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Great to see you today, Alice. How you doing? Good, how are you? I'm doing awesome, thanks. So before we jump into the questions, share a little bit about who Allison Grace is outside of your business, um, being a, solo, a young solopreneur. Well, the holistic kind of like supplement thing has always been a part of my life due to my brother having autism and epilepsy. He had his first seizure when I was just two weeks old. So we've kind of always just been on this journey. So it's just always what I've been used to. If I've been a dancer since I was six. Um, so that dance has also has always been my life. 
in 12th grade, I ended up starting homeschooling because in sixth grade I, when I was 12, because um, they wanted to put me in a cross pedagogical class with like high functioning Down syndrome and high functioning autism kids because of some learning differences. And my mom had ended up pulling me out to have me learn at home so I could work at my own pace because I just kind of needed a little bit of assistance. I didn't need to be in a class with kids that had more like behavioral kind of issues. Sure. But, um, <laughs> My um, and my dad, he has bipolar and some other issues. So kind of you know treating my mental health issues holistically, so I don't go down that path. Right. It's kind of important as well to me because I want to make sure I don't go down those bumpy roads because he's been through some rough times. Sure. Sure. And my brother, he ended up having a seizure. He fell, hit his head, had a brain bleed, and that triggered mm. some really bad time where we were constantly living in chaos, which resulted in having to go to a residential program. He's actually coming home in April, which is going to make us uproot and move to Arizona because Illinois has like no services for him. So right. around mid-April, we're going to be moving to Arizona. Wow. So from Chicago, from the cold weather down to Arizona, which is really, really good dry heat down there. So, yeah. well, thanks for sharing that. So Allison, growing up, um, Part of your story is that you really couldn't focus in school. Your anxiety really controlled your days and you were angry more often than not. So for those that are watching today, share what that was like for you as a teenager, because you are now you, you're in your final years of teenagehood before you hit your 20s here this year. So share a little bit about for those who potentially could be going through what you were going through during your teenage and developing years. So go ahead. Yeah. Being an 18 year old, you know, it's really tricky. You know, you're in like that, you're an adult, but you're also still a teen. So it's complicated because you want to be like, you're still a teenager, but everybody expects you to be grown up. So it's, aw it's awkward. But back, back when I was like 13, that's when everything like my grandpa he died when i was 12 almost 13. my brother fell had the brain bleed so i went through a lot of you know trauma sure. so it was really hard you know and my brother was living in chaos so we all were just living trying to be make everything go as soon as possible to keep him safe and everything happy so he didn't because he would fight when he got really angry so we just try to you know live in peace and calm kind of a situation so it was always just really stressful for me mm -hmm. so I always just kind of kind of kept it quiet so there's a lot of times where I would be crying myself to sleep at night because I would just be so like upset because I felt he was more important so I kind of kept it quiet but then I would also have my anger at moments because I would just get so overwhelmed because I had sensory issues and sometimes sound if it's too loud you know it irritates me and then Right. there's constant yelling because he's wanting to go for a ride at three in the morning and you're waking up because 911's being called because he's fighting my mom non-stop and we're hiding in the bathroom with our dog so, so really yeah so you you did a lot of internalization <laughs> in yeah. regards to trying to control your emotions and uh putting the focus on your brother because of his situation and trying to, you know you wanting to make things peaceful <laughs> Yeah. But then, of course, uh, and, and I relate to that because and I, I bottle up my feelings as well. And then eventually when I snap, it's a big snap. Right, right. So you explode. You basically yeah. get to breaking point. You explode, which is something that, you know, I grew up with at times as well. So I totally relate with that. But so, you know, you talk about, um, you know, growing up, you were on different types of programs and your mom was really, really interested in holistic protocols, you worked with doctors, she wasn't happy with those programs. And so you're kind of going back and forth. But, you know, working with these doctors, they just, it wasn't working for you. And you've spoken openly about wanting to end, you know, end it all because of the frustrations that were unbearable. So today we talk about teenage suicide, teenage suicidal um, idealiz um, idealizations, and, and that thought process, hey, I attempted, I'm a uh, two-time survivor of attempted suicide myself around your age. So I totally relate to, um, you know, those feelings. 
but share with us a little bit about what that was like for you so others again might who might be watching could possibly relate to the struggles and then we'll talk about you know what what they can do because obviously we we don't want them to you know um pursue this to an end result here yeah, I would just get so upset sometimes. I'm just like, life isn't fair. Like, I went through a phase where like I thought God wasn't real, and I lost my faith. And I'm like, why is God doing this? Why is my God? Because all this happened because my brother he has a diagnosis of pandas. He has also has autism. That's um a autoimmune disease where you get strep, and that's when he had the seizure, fell, his head had the brain bleed, and it's an autoimmune disorder that can trigger like psych like so close psychosis like right. it can trigger depression suicide it can trigger all of those mental sure. health issues and i have like all the same sisters like there are times where i am my brother's sister so it's assumed that i have strap because last may i had strap and that's when these weird ticks that i have started and so it's assumed that i also probably have it as well and so then they're sad and that can trigger suicide um but so pretty much, I would just get so emotional because of everything that was going on. I was like, why did, he, why did he have to get strapped? Why did he have to fall? And I just get upset. Or I, you know, have a moment where I get mad at my mom. I, whatever, call her some swear words. And because I would just lose it. My brain would get so angry. And I would just, yeah. why is God real? Why does he make people act this way? Why is, where is he? Why is he helping us? Like, if he's so real, he wouldn't make people feel this way. And I would just get so upset. And I usually end up cutting myself or something like that. Right. To avoid not actually hurting myself. So, I mean, there have been times where I've made suicide notes thinking I'm going to do it. But then I remember my brother and I'm like, but my brother, I can't leave him. He wouldn't understand. Like, we, what if, like, my mom went to go see him at his group home and I wasn't there. He'd be like, well, where's Allison? Right. He'd get it. Or he'd go to my room and be like, where, where is she? All her stuff's here. Where is she? So, so your, your, brother, your brother was the catalyst um, <laughs> to uh you not moving forward and pursuing that so that that's great i mean i i love that story and your brother was that that you know yeah. that rock for you to say i can't leave my brother so you know a, a couple of years ago your mom wanted to try something new she was introduced to something new and you were very very skeptical because you've been going through so many different protocols trying to see what would work what doesn't work most of them didn't work and uh, share a little bit about um, that journey when you were looking at a holistic uh, protocol that basically addresses gut health and mental health. Take us back to that, you know, that time a couple of years ago when you were introduced to this specific protocol and then bring us up to where you are today and, and what has changed, how has it changed in you know what? What are you? What is your outlook today in regards to this specific plant-based protocol? At first, I thought, oh, it's just another supplement. Okay, what is this going to do? Because we've been on so many supplements, I'm like, this is nothing. Okay, fine, I'll take it, whatever. <laughs> and I noticed that my sleep would improve. Um, I felt more calm every like every now and then. Like um, my bloating has like progressively went down. Like. A lot of slow improvements throughout the months like my sleep got better my focus got better my um period cramps went away my bloating went away occasionally i might break out here and there but my skin has improved like every month still to this day and we've been on the prize for probably about three years i still notice things progressing like my migraines they disappeared like maybe maybe on my period i might get one or two migraines but like mm -hmm. Everything is slowly, slowly gets better. Like you still notice improvements. And my mom actually puts because my brother they won't let him take the products at his group home because they don't they don't like do supplements because they have a separate pharmacy they work through. Sure. And she puts one of the products in his drink, and he goes back and he has an amazing after return. But last week and we actually went yesterday, we forgot to put it in his drink because we only we didn't bring one in for some reason we forgot them. And he had a terrible evening. Ah, uh, that's too bad. But with the but, with, <laughs> what was he doing? What the energy or the which which was um, 
or edge was he doing edge energy he puts edge and kids mood in his drink edge and kids awesome awesome because that helps with mood motivation we brought the edge and but we did not bring the um uh kids mood yeah so yeah. the kids mood with the saffron afron is um was was the clincher for mm -hmm. you know settling those uh, the stress levels because we had brought it for a couple of weeks and then he had yeah. a he had a not so good weekend like he woke up in the middle of the night and i go well we didn't bring the kids mood because we didn't know what we did different so then we brought it again and then this weekend we forgot it and it was bad oh wow and we're like okay well that's it it's the kids mood it was helping him go back home awesome so it's making a difference for him and and does anybody in the in the home realize that he's doing this or you this is on on the sly it's on the sly i don't know on the sly okay well, hey, you're doing it. He's having a good um, day, a good night, getting through, and that's all that that really matters. Mm -hmm. So, um, which is great. So we've talked to, you know, we talk about, you know, our gut health. We talk about our brain health, and the idea here is to really we're out there educating people <laughs> about holistic options because, unfortunately, the pharmaceuticals they're there for a certain reason. Um, very quick, you know, release, relief of whatever, but it's not a long-term solution. We're educating people about plants because plants were being, were put here for a reason. And one of the biggest things is, you know, having a really good mind, um, no brain fog, clarity, a good mood, so forth and so on. And it's all about really looking at what types of cutting edge neurotropics that we're looking at, which have adaptogens. And these are all, you know, plant-based protocols, as I said, and it helps with mood, motivation, mental energy, and overall state of mind, because so many people are just in a, in a state of mind where they're just confused. They don't know what's going on. And I want to just play a quick commercial here in regards to this happy mind pack. And, you know, if anybody out there is looking for something that, you know, for example, mood, they're, they're want mo uh, mo they're improved mood motivation, brain health, neuron regeneration, focus on focus and memory issues, and then mental energy and endurance. And this particular product, it's a four product pack that promotes a healthy, positive mood. And this is something that, you know, I do daily. I do daily. It's, it's plant-based. It's holistic. So take a look at this and uh, we'll be right back. Okay, we are back, and I can't believe we're coming up to a close of this interview. But before we go, I do want uh, a couple more questions with you, Allison. So uh, today, you are actually part of that Gen Z preneur, and the Gen Z is from 13 to 19, and you are 19. And uh, you're I'm almost 19. I'll be 19 in June. Oh, you'll be 19 in June. So you're still 18. I thought you were already 19. So my bad, my bad. So even, even better, 18 years old. So what is that like for you um, being an 18 year old, being a solo female, you know, preneur, being a Gen Z individual and uh, starting to build your own business? What is, what is that like out there for you? For me, it's kind of normal because my mom has been doing network marketing pretty much my whole life. So it's something I've been used to. It's just 
different because I'm not used to posting. Like, you know, I made a TikTok account, which I, like, never posted. I had a music league when it was back then, but I rarely posted. Mm -hmm. So it's just, like, different. Sure. But it's normal. Okay. So you're weird weird being 18 and not going to college and trying to build a business by posting on social media. But then at the same time, I know if I'm going to open a dance studio eventually in my life, because that's kind of part of my dream. There's really no need for me to go to college if I'm going to do this business to help people mentally and physically feel better and then do my dream and open the dance studio. So I'll just do this. That was my way to get money for my studio. Yes, absolutely. Well, that's that's awesome. That's that's um, beautiful. So, yeah, I used to teach dance for many, many years and in Italy. So and in, in New York City. So I uh, wish you the best of luck on, on that. But uh, for those budding Generation Z peeps who are out there, um, where and if they're interested in learning a little bit more about what you're doing, uh, I do have in the scrolling bar at the bottom, they can follow you on Facebook at sharky dot is it noodle noodle dot seven but where where else can they get in touch with you uh, my facebook is just my first and middle name is allison grace and then instagram is allison dot grace dot oh four and so is tiktok okay so just repeat that one more time because what i did is i actually went to your <laughs> facebook page and this was in the url address of of your facebook page so Say it one more time for, for the viewers. My Facebook should just be Allison Grace. And then Instagram is Grace04, And then um, TikTok is the same. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Very good. Well, thanks. Thanks for sharing that. So uh, I do have one more question uh-huh. for you. Okay. Um, before we, before I do the closing here. And if there was one piece of advice that you could give anybody who's watching today or who is going to watch the replay, uh, who is looking for that glimmer of hope from either a personal or a professional perspective, what would that be? Uh, If you're just in a stressful situation and you just think you just can't anymore, just take a deep breath, maybe go for a walk, take a nice warm bath and just take, take a nap and just think in your head, this is going to be okay. I say in the mirror, this is okay. I'm okay. I'm smart. Just do your positive affirmations and just keep faith and just keep on swimming, as Story would say. Awesome. That's great, great advice. So, Allison, I can't thank you enough for taking time today to be my youngest guest uh, on this Holistic Mental Fitness Series. And you are going to be changing the world for so many people out there. And it's an amazing journey. You've shared some great um, nuggets of your story. So if, if people relate, please reach out to Allison. And uh, we're on this holistic health and wellness journey to leading the global holistic mental wellness revolution. And my special guest next week is going to be Don Sullivan. And she is a tigress, she is a go-getter, and she is an amazing woman and is leading, you know, hundreds and thousands of people in this journey. And I'm excited to have her on board next week. So I believe we all should be living in abundance and optimum wellness, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and financially. And lastly, Mental fitness is the new physical health. And I will see you on the um, next show. All right. Have a great uh, afternoon, evening, or morning, wherever you are. Allison, again, thank you.